thank you. I am so glad to be in your presence today. Uh, two years ago, before COVID, I think, before COVID, I came from Eldridge to see Moy University. I myself came to Matato. I met the administrator of the in person in the administrative block. I wanted to reach out to you. I wanted to come and see you. But God has, I believe that God has appointed this time to meet you all. I am glad to, to be in your midst today. Uh, I thank uh, the Dean of Students, Mr. Ignatius, sir. Uh, so recently when I say that I want to reach out to you, he gladly agreed and has introduced me to you. Thank you so much, sir. I am so glad that you are so talented and you have a burden for the, for the Lord. I have seen that. But all these things, what God has kept in our hearts as a young people, will be fruitful, will bring and bear a fruit only if we have a heart of gratitude and in the end of our life. Hallelujah. Otherwise, the word of God is telling the people who don't have gratitude will fall like the leaves in the autumn. Isn't it? So, what made David, we have seen a very wonderful word of God, what made David, even today we are speaking about David, even Jesus Christ has been pleased to be called as the son of David. He has not rejected when the people has called him the son of David. He has gladly received it. The only reason for that fruit, even in the, in the revelation, it says uh, about Jesus, the, the root of Jesse, the root of David. Yes, because the fruits are still there. Even today, we are experiencing the fruit that has not gone in vain. Only because of that heart of the gratitude of David. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the fundamental thing in a spiritual life that holds you blameless to stand before the Lord. That is the fundamental thing. Whatever may be your nature, whatever may be your condition, spiritual status today, but if we have this heart of gratitude, it will definitely bring the will of God to happen in our lives. So what is the heart of gratitude? We have seen here in 2 Samuel, the King David is saying, Who am I, O Lord, God, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? No, no. 
It has the quality of knowing our own unworthiness is a real root for the gratitude. Hallelujah. So when one knows his own unworthiness, there arises the, there comes gratitude. Without knowing our unworthiness, we don't, we cannot have the heart of gratitude. Maybe we can praise or we can thank with our words, with our lips, but it will not endure. That's why God is telling here, we have read in the scripture, I may not need to repeat it. I will not withhold my grace as I have withhold it to Saul. Saul, after becoming a king, has forgotten who he is. One, once upon a time, he is even fearing to come before the people. But after becoming a king over the Israel as the first king, actually God wanted to establish his kingdom. God does not have a second God. But because of lack of gratitude of Saul and he became pride. That's why he has withdrawn his grace from him. In fact, I, I tell one thing. Saul is so good than David. I, I, I may not say like good. There are some good characteristics in Saul. We may not see many mistakes in life of Saul. But only thing that has God has withdrawn his grace is because of the pride which is an enemy to the gratitude. Which is an inhibitory thing that suppresses the gratitude. So, first of all, he does say so, but the heart of gratitude will know its unworthiness. One's own unworthiness. That's why even Paul says in 2 Timothy, himself 
for my sake. Hallelujah. So what only when you recognize your unworthiness, your heart will be filled with gratitude. Have you recognized your unworthiness to this extent? Did we examine our hearts to this extent deeply? Otherwise, one day your devotion is going to become volatile. Though you seem to be very devotional man today, though you seem to be a praise, um, a praising person today, though you seem to be a good Christian outwardly today, one day your devotion is going to become volatile, like water vapors with the sun, and you are not going to stand. We are not going to stand. Because the reason is when you are laying foundation to your Christian life, it has not been, been built on knowing who you are, Kavisa. One day something will come and we are shake. But Paul's life cannot be shaken because he knows who he is. To this extent, when you come to the Christ, how you recognize your unworthiness? That unworthiness, when we recognize our unworthiness, when our hearts have been filled with the gratitude, it do one thing. It will take us
One point of that is going to come that even if you say that I am a good Christian, I am a great Christian, you are going to be persecuted. In fact, the word of God says in Timothy that any Christian who want to do a right devotional life is going to be persecuted. In your own circumstances, in our own circumstances, even in Kenya, even in Moy University, if you want to do a real Christian life, we are going to be, you are going to experience persecutions with your own friends. If you agree with them, if you are mingled with them, you are okay. If you want to do a real Christian life, which is pleasing to the Lord, not to the people, you will definitely be segregated. Did you ever experience such things? I don't think. Few of you might have experienced. If you want to choose the path of God, but Saturn will, Saturn will, will do what you know. It will be very happy when you are singing. It will be very happy when you are praising. It will, it will be very happy when we are expressing our talents. Ah, do it. I also do it. In fact, I am the, I am the, the first person, uh, I am the chief artist person. But, it will be happy when we are hearing the word of God also. Ah, here, very well. Go. Here. But when we are doing the word of God in our lives, it comes. It will not even touch you if you are a hearing Christian. You will have everything. But if you have this heart of knowing your unworthiness, digging deep in your heart, who you are, and going to the Lord, confessing to such an extent, then everything will come out. It will start your war, his, his, his warfare upon, upon us. Hallelujah. So dear children of God, why I tell you this one, uh, even though this is not our topic, why I told about the world, these are the end times. In the end times, how the people are going to be? We see in 2 Timothy, Chapter 3, verse 1 onwards. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to the parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure than the lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. And from such if we give ourselves to God, who is, who is to be as a, Paul says that we are the, his fellow workers. Hallelujah. If we are submitting ourselves, if you submit your heart, then only God will be happy. If we are thankful to somebody, we will give something, especially in Africa, isn't you? So you will take something to others when you are going to others' place, isn't it? One day one man came to me. I have treated him. He's, he has been cured very well. He said, of course I know it is Jesus who heals anyone, not the doctors. Definitely. Sindhu. So he came to my house. He brought a goo goo. <laughs> And he said, it is our culture. We will not come uh, 
alone when we are coming to see somebody. Yes, it's a good culture, isn't it? You all know better than me. So, God, if you have gratitude, He said, I, I, have, I am completely relieved of my pain, doctor. So, I, I came with Mama today uh, to give you something. So, are you going to give? If you have a gratitude, according to our culture, we give something which is our best to the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you going to give your best to the Lord? God wants your heart. Your full heart, not half half. A frog will do what? Frog will stay in water, frog will stay in on the land also. But the fish, it stays only in the water. Jesus has fed fish only. Frog will not be useful for them. Be eaten by anybody. 